All right. I think my voice is back to the point where I could uh, manage a video. Okay, so I want you guys... I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on in One Piece right now. Like, I mean, the big thing in the community is which group is heading to Egghead, you know? Is it going to be Shanks? Is it going to be Blackbeard? Is it going to be the Cross Guild? Is it going to be the Straw Hat Grand Fleet? Is it going to be Neomads? You know, a lot of stuff going on with that. But let's not let that overlook the fact... This is Nico Robbins' third consecutive Buster Call, man! Robin is asleep right now, or possibly sedated, depending on how bad her injuries were. So she's kind of like in that stretcher, that little floaty stretcher thing, and Chopper's kind of taking care of her and everything like that. I want you to just imagine Robin waking up. Like, there's an explosion in the distance. Robin is, like, jostled awake, and she's like, huh? What? And then, like, Chopper's there, and, you know, he's like, okay, it's okay, Robin. We're, we're here. It's me. It's Usopp. It's Nami. We're, we're all okay. We're all good. And he's like, oh, my goodness. Chopper, I had such a horrible dream. I was back on Ohara, and they were just bombarding the island incessantly. And then, and then all of a sudden, I was back at Eni's lobby, and, and then more cannon fire was going on. It just, it haunts my dreams. Oh, it's a good thing that that's not happening. And then Chopper and Nami and Usopp are all like, Ooh, ah, mm, uh, okay, so, about that, uh, you survived two of these, third time you'll probably be fine. <laughs> You know, it's like, okay, it's, it's horrifying. It's awful. Like, this is, hor this is, like, the worst thing the government can do to an island save from nuking it from orbit, which I guess kind of now that the mother frame exists, a buster call is sort of, like, listen, I Buster calls are scary. They're they're scary, right? It's the bombardment and just complete devastation of an island with a bunch of military battleships, right? Okay, it's scary. But in One Piece, we have characters that have Logia powers that, like, like Kizaru could be on the island the entire time the Buster call is going on, and, and he's gonna be fine. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, in, in the case of, like, certain Devil Fruit users, it's really not that scary. Um, and now that we have, like, the giant laser gun that can just not only obliterate like buster calls will bombard an island till it's nothing but ash but the mother frame will just you know punch a hole straight in the ocean defying gravity and physics along the way you know i mean so once once you have that a plain old run-of-the-mill buster call it, it's kind of lost its luster as it were but it's still scary okay i'm sure robin still does wake up in a cold sweat many nights picturing the burning embers of her homeland as the tree of knowledge topples over okay it's still traumatizing as shit right all right so this is her third one, you know, and uh, I, I, I think honestly at this point the government might just have to retire the Buster Call protocol. If they can't kill one woman after three of these, all right, I think there's going to be a certain point where it's like, okay, we got to, we got to, because like imagine if that information got out, which it kind of already has, right? Like, because everybody knows that O'Hara was Buster called. Everybody knows that like, because there had to be a story kind of disseminated into the world of like, oh, the, uh, the scholars at O'Hara, they were researching the void century. They were trying to like take over the world government or something. They were an island full of devils. We had to Buster call it. And it's like, okay, but there was this one girl that managed to escape. You know there was plenty of people probably even back then after O'Hara that were like, wait a minute, so the Buster Call is like the supreme military, like, it's it's the kill switch. It's the just burn this entire, blow it up, you know, to destroy everything, no survivors kind of situation. And an eight-year-old girl was able to survive that? Like, all right. Like, I don't know about you, but if I was a if I was in the One Piece world and I heard that story, I'd be a little bit of a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. Like, mm, I think the government's not telling us the whole story about this. I think the Goro say are lying a little bit, right? Okay. And then 20-something years later, Robin, who was already known to be a survivor from O'Hara, is at any's lobby, and another Buster Call is somehow 
Robin Denny's lobby, and Robin manages to get away again. You know, that same dude. There's there's a dude. There's a conspiracy theorist somewhere out there in the One Piece world who's just, like, following all the events of the world government and everything like that. And he's like, wait a second. Robin survived two Buster Coles? That's impossible. There's something going on here, you know? And now the third one. The third one, okay? And this egghead is showing up in the papers. Like, this was announced in the newspapers that, like, the government was mobilizing and bringing Vegapunk in and everything like that. So this is this is going to be public knowledge. Like, the fact that Egghead was Buster called into oblivion, this is well known. So Robin, if she, I'm assuming Robin's going to get away from this one. I don't think Robin's going to die right here. This is, this is where Robin's story ends, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, this is also where I'm done reviewing One Piece. You know, when Robin dies, it's over. I don't even, this is like, well... Time to hit that old dusty trail. I, that's just how Oda went with the story. I don't need to know how the rest of it goes, okay? Um, but no, yeah, so a couple of things I'm interested in. Number one, I'm interested in what Robin's immediate reaction to this is going to be, okay? Because it might surprise you. Like, I, I really love one of my favorite Robin moments in all of One Piece is when they're all at Zoe. And they're looking at all the poneglyphs and everything like that. Like, they're, they're finding out about the road poneglyphs or the load poneglyphs for the first time, right? And Ino Arashi and Nekamamushi are going on and on about how valuable these things are. And if once you collect all four, you can chart a location. You can chart the course to Laugh Tale and get the One Piece and everything like that. And they also go on and warn Robin. And it's like, you know, there's very, very few people in the world that can read poneglyphs. Like, Robin, you are one of the handful of people that can decipher these. Because you're entering this stage of your journey, finding the load poneglyphs, there's going to be a lot of really strong people and pirates that are going to be coming after you. And Robin is not afraid. Robin is not scared. We don't even have, like, a bead of sweat going down Robin. Like, oh, I'm scared. You know, no. Robin is 100% confident in, yes, her own abilities, but also her friends and their abilities and that they're all a big family and that what they did for her at Eddie's Lobby. And so Robin, without missing a beat, is like, oh, don't worry. I have friends. Well, I'll be fine. You know, it's like, I, we're, we're okay. And everyone's in Luffy and Usopp are like, oh, Robin, gee shucks, you're so nice. So the reaction to Robin... Like, once she finds out what's going on here, like, oh, yeah, another Buster call. I, I would imagine her reaction could be anything from genuine fear. Like, like she gets up and they tell her and then she just breaks out into a cold sweat and she's just like, oh, God, oh, no, not again. Or it could be like, it's okay. We've, we've done this before. We've been through this shit before. It's okay. I, I believe in you. I trust in you. Like, maybe maybe she gives the Straw Hats a pep talk or something, right? She's like, Usopp, Usopp, listen to me. You know, Usopp's freaking out. He's losing. Oh, my God, it's another Buster call. Why does this keep happening to us? Robin grabs Usopp, slaps him in the face like, listen, Usopp, you are God. Usopp's like, what? Yes, you are God. Remember that time in Dressrosa? We were in the uh, underground port, and I got turned into a Raggedy Ann doll, and you were the one that saved me, Usopp. You're the one that saved me. You can do this shit, all right? I trust in you. I believe in you. And it's like, okay. All right, Robin, if you think so, I can take on the world. I can fight the government. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe reel it back a little bit, Usopp. Maybe reel it back that much. We don't want to go that crazy. I can take on the entire Buster Call myself. And then Usopp flies out the window he comes down and he single-handedly defeats Saturn. Be the last thing anybody expected, right? So no, but you know, Robin might, you know, inspires like, it's okay guys, it's alright, we've been through this, we could get through it before, we've gone through it before, we could get through it again, it'll be okay, it'll be alright. The other version of this, the other variation that I would really love, is if Robin's reaction to another Buster call is like a jaded, like, 90s action movie stars kind of reaction. You know, like like Sylvester Stallone or something getting tied back into another Rambo movie or something. He just, like, lights up a cigarette or a cigar. Like, Robin gets up, like, there's a third Buster call. And she's just, she gets up out of the stretcher. She walks over to Vegapunk's bar, which I'm sure he has. She pours herself just a, just a straight vodka, just straight vodka. Lays it down, picks up the glass, and is just like, just when you think you're out, they keep pulling you back in. Ugh. All right, so this is what we're all going to do. Nami, I need you to run point. Usopp, I need you to... <laughs> and it's just like... And they just listen to her because it's like, I mean, yeah, you've survived three of these, right? Okay, sure. Oh, my goodness. So, um... Moving on beyond that, what are all of the obstacles that the Straw Hats need to overcome in order to escape Egghead? Because there's a lot, right? Like, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, okay? 
So first of all, the, the biggest threat is Saint Saturn, right? Giant, immortal spider guy that rules over the world, basically, with, you know, the four other elders and then Eam at the very top, okay? And uh, he's got some crazy weird magic powers, and we're not really sure what everything he can do yet. So you, they got to overcome him. You also have Admiral Kizaru, who... In the last chapter is very clearly, like, he's flipped the switch when it comes to his, like, uh, morality or his ethics. He is, like, very much just shut himself down emotionally. And in many ways is sort of like a pacifista right now. It's like he is full-on work mode. Okay? And let's... Let's pause for that. I, I know I keep coming back to Kizaru. I've made like two or three videos about this already. Like, Kizaru's going to be on the side of the Straw Hats. No, Kizaru's going to switch sides. No, Kizaru's going to be over here. Listen, you know, I was thinking about this for a moment, and there was a comment that somebody made in on the review, and I'll, I'll pull it up here. And uh, it was basically like, dude, Kizaru, like, what choices does he really have here? You know, the dude is kind of backed into a corner, all right? So just to analyze that very quick, because I, I, I stopped and thought about it for a bit, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? He actually kind of is. Now, because, like, in the review, I was like, come on, Kizaru, why don't you fight against Saturn, blind him, fight him or something? Okay, let's assume Kizaru did that. Let's assume Kizaru was like, I can't allow Saturn to harm Vegapunk. This is wrong. This is not what I signed up for. I, you know, I will fight Saturn. Okay. Given Saturn's abilities, which, you know, many of which, like, we know some of them, but a lot of which we can only guess at, right? What if Kizaru goes to fight Saturn, and Saturn is like, screw you, you're a traitor, grabs Kizaru, crushes him, and just kills him, all right? Which, he might be able to do that. Like, he might just be able to kill Kizaru, all right? So in that case, Kizaru has now given up his life for nothing, really. Like, you know, you could say, well, it's it's the thought that counts <laughs> kind of thing. Like, OK, even if Kizaru went up against Saturn and Saturn immediately killed him or, you know, did some weird eldritch thing to, like, trap him or seal him away or something or kill him. You know, even if he did that and, and he didn't really end up helping Vegapunk get away at all, like it was pretty quick. Uh, he was just killed as a traitor. Uh, even if that was the case, at least he tried. Right. Like he he was true to himself or something. He helped out a friend. It's just like, well. That, that's still giving the expectation of Kizaru to give up his life, which is a very tall thing to ask anyone. So in Kizaru's position right now, he's like, all right, I can either do what Saturn says and survive till tomorrow, like I can continue on living, or I can go against Saturn and die. Now, I might die and my death might help Vegapunk get away, which is good, I didn't die for nothing, or I could die and Vegapunk could still die. In which case, you know, Kizaru essentially has thrown his life away for no reason. And he's still dead, you know what I mean? Dying in One Piece is kind of a big deal. You know, once you're dead, you're not coming back, all right? There's not a single person in all of One Piece that has died and came back, all right? We've never happened, period. Yeah. You know, Kizaru's like, I don't want to die if I have to ally myself with Saturn. I mean, it's horrible. I have to shut myself down in order to make sure I can get over that. But if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. I mean, you know, so uh, it's a tight spot for Kizaru. Maybe maybe you're still under the impression, like, no, it doesn't matter. Kizaru, even if he dies, even if he ultimately doesn't end up helping uh, them escape, he should still do it because that's that's the right thing to do in the situation. Well, it's like there's a lot of crap going on right now. So, but yeah, Saturn, Kizaru, then all the vice admirals that are on the island. They have all the pacifista Mark Threes that are now under the control of the Gorosei. Um, I was thinking for a moment, like, well, you do have the Seraphim. The Seraphim are still in the lab. What if you, you know, de-bubble, you know, pop the Seraphim out of their bubbles and then they could help you? And it's like, well then that's not going to help because, you know, Saturn could just give the order to the Seraphim, and now the Seraphim are on the government side, too. With the exception of, like, because that's the thing, like, the Seraphim, at least we know with S-Snake, are able to go against their programming under certain uh, situations, right? So we saw that with S-Snake. Uh, Kumo was also mentioned, S-Bear was also mentioned to be malfunctioning, okay? So I think it's very possible, like, right now in the lab, uh, you know, where, like, Nami, Usopp, and Robin, and Chopper are and everything like that, like, if, if stuff starts getting intense in the lab area, they might have to release the Seraphim, you know? And just, like, I think they'll be able to override the initial orders that York gave them. 
Although the hierarchy structure is always confusing to me. Like, for example, with the Seraphim, I guess if it was so easy to do that, they would have done it already. York already gave the order. Um, I guess they could force York into giving an order. You know, because, well, here's the reason why I'm staying with the Seraphim, okay? I don't think they're going to just leave the Seraphim behind. I think they're probably going to bring at least some of them to Elbaf. I think it would be weird to introduce the concept of the Seraphim and just like, yeah, we're just going to leave them in the lab and we're going to go to Elbaf and like whatever. You know, now the government has the Seraphim to order around too. And as we've already learned, the Seraphim are freaking dangerous, okay? So even if even if you don't want to get them out of the bubbles, it might be a smart idea to just take the bubbles, pick them up, and throw them on the sunny and get out of there. So at least now the government doesn't have them. I mean, the government still has some of the Seraphim. They have um, Morias and Doe Flamingos and Crocodile Seraphim that we've seen in other parts of the world putting down various rebellions, right? But I think at least the one with S Bear and S Snake, uh, if Luffy's around for S Snake and maybe if Bonnie's around for S Bear, maybe, you know, the hierarchy structure will be corrupted or something and they'll actually obey other people other than the Vegapunks or the Gorosei or anything like that, right? You know, uh, and I guess, you know, the thing with York is they could hold out like a gun to York and just be like, order the Seraphim to listen to us, you know, or something like that. And I guess at that point, it depends, like, what is going to happen with York? I'm curious. You know what? I don't think I, I don't think this is going to end well for York. I think she's uh, I think she's going to get assassinated by the end of this. Honestly, like I can imagine, like it, the Straw Hats are going to escape, probably with the help of the Grand Fleets or maybe Neomads or some other group that the group that's coming is going to help with all that, like Saturn and Kizaru, all of the Pacifista Mark Threes, all of the Vice Admirals. There needs to be a big group coming, like that group, because like, that's where I was so like focused on Kizaru joining the sides of the Straw Hats because they really need Kizaru's help to get out of there because they're so outnumbered but now that we have another group arriving it's like okay that other group will help the straw hats get away and fight off kizaru and saturn and stuff like that right sure okay so after this is all said and done after the straw hats escape York, I think, is still going to be in the lab, and she's going to be all chained up and, like, still there, and then maybe uh, the government, like, you know, they all march in or something, and Saturn walks in, and he's a spider, and Kizaru's there and everything, and they look down at York. Now, here's the question. Do they eliminate York because, like, she's a Vegapunk, she's a threat? You can imagine it being something along the lines of, like, Okay, Vegapunk was too dangerous to leave alive, you know, his his genius was a detriment to the government's security, so they might just assassinate York right there. Or it might be kind of like a threatening thing with York, where it's like, York, you wanted to be a Celestial Dragon, right? And she's like, yeah, but I know you bastards aren't gonna let me be a Celestial Dragon anymore, I'm not helping you either. It'd be like, alright, you either help us or you die. Like, that's gonna be a thing. Because now we have, because... Shaka's gone, Pythagoras is gone, um, right? So we have Atlas, Edison, Lilith, and York. If York goes over to the government side, we might still have Lilith and Edison. Uh, Atlas might die along the way. I don't know. Um, I, I just have a feeling Atlas isn't going to make it out of this alive. I don't know for whatever reason, right? So you could have a thing now. You could have, like... Edison and Lilith are Vegapunks that are, leave with the Straw Hats that make it to Elbaf, but, you know, so they have a Vegapunk on their side, they have two of them, but the government also has a Vegapunk on their side, and they have to basically coerce York to, like, listen, you can either work for us and use your genius, um, and, and the idea, the ultimate idea is, like, okay... They have some of the satellites with them. The Straw Hats made it out of Egghead with some of the satellites. So we can't... If we just kill York right here, then they have the genius of Vegapunk, and we don't. So Saturn might be looking at it sort of like... Oh, and the Stella as well. Like, the Stella's... I, I hope the Stella doesn't die. So if the Stella gets away, then that's three Vegapunks they have on their side. Saturn might be viewing this like... I will... We will keep York with us... And then after we eliminate the Stella and Lilith and Edison, all the other satellites, then we eliminate York. And they might just be upfront about this with York. They might just be like, this is the way it's going to go down or we're just going to kill you right here. But then again, York is smart, so she might be like, you're not going to kill me. I'm too I'm too uh, useful to you. I'm, I'm too valuable. You're not just going to end it like that. It's like, ah, damn it, you're right. But then again... You know, it's all of the resources of the world government and all of, you know, Saturn's eldritch powers at his disposal. So they might be able to do that. Or they might just assassinate York right away. Like they walk into the lab and York is there like, let me out of here. I'll help you. I'll do whatever. And then they're just like, nope. Boom. And then like, okay, 
we're on a Vegapunk extermination mission now. Like, no Vegapunks left alive. You know, it might be something along those lines, right? So, yeah. But if they can get away with the Seraphim and make it all the way to Elbaf, even contained in the Sea Prism bubbles, then it's just like, all right, you know, maybe we could figure out some way to reprogram them or something. Because, you know, the whole reason that Vegapunk programmed them in that hierarchical structure, that, that, that chip, was because Saturn was the one funding all the operations, and Saturn was the one that, like, I'm a scientist. I'm something of a scientist myself, Vegapunk. If you don't program them exactly to my specifications, I will know. Well, now they're on the run! Right? They're on the freaking run. So why couldn't they get to, if they manage to get away, they get to Elbath, couldn't, like, Vegapunk do, like, some rewiring in the Seraphim, in the, in the command chip, and be like, all right, Quasar, I'm removing all of the stupid command structures. They're only listening to us now. Only the Stella and Lilith and Edison are the only people. You know, nobody else can order these things around anymore, all right? Un unless you have, like, the emotional override, like with Luffy and S-Snake, or probably Bonnie and S-Bear, you know what I mean? Something like that, right? That's that's the way, I mean, that's gonna work, okay? So, uh, could Vegapunk rewire them? Because it's like, there's no point anymore to be like, well, I'm already an enemy of the government, they're already trying to kill me, so I might as well just do this, you know what I mean? So we don't have to worry about this anymore, right? Uh, that is actually, that's actually a really good idea. Because once the Straw Hats get to Elbaf, they're going to have their adventure there on the giant island, right? They're going to meet Dory and Bragi again, and, and Robin is going to have a Tier 4 reunion with Saul, and I can't wait for that. That is something I'm really excited that's probably going to happen this year. I am just, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for the chapter where Robin walks in like, oh yeah, Saul's over there. He's in that tree or whatever. He's in the Yggdrasil tree or the library or something. And then I can imagine Robin like walking in, and then that's the end of the chapter, and then in the next chapter is the big reunion, and it's so heartwarming and wholesome and amazing, and I just, I can't wait for it, right? But the Straw Hats aren't going to stay on Elbaf indefinitely, of course. They got to continue their journey, right? I don't think they're going to go all the way to Laugh Tale with all the Vegapunks in tow, and Bonnie, and the Seraphim. It, it would make more sense for the Seraphim to be reprogrammed and be used as a bodyguard team for Vegapunk while he stays at Elbaf. Now, obviously, you have the Giants as well, but it's going to be a lot harder for the government to invade and buster call an island like Elbaf with the Giant Army, you know what I mean? So they're going to be protected, okay? So the only way they can honestly do it is if they bu they boot up the mother frame again, you know? They're just like, all right, here we go. And then they, like, attack Elbaf with that thing, okay? And even then... Even then, I could kind of see the Giants using some really powerful hockey technique to, like, like refract the laser cannon or something like that. I, that would be cool, right? Like, all the Giants get together and they all use, like, you know, ultimate Elbaf shield! And then, boom! And the laser just bounces right off of it. Like, that would be really cool, right? But, uh, yeah, I think, I think don't forget about the Seraphim, because they're still around. Uh, Robin's third buster call, but she can make it through. And then after this, the government has to hang their head in shame. It's like, okay, guys, three buster calls, we couldn't kill one woman. This is pathetic. This is pathetic. <laughs> you know, this is, this is ridiculous. We're, re we're retiring the buster call protocol, all right? It's just, it's an embarrassment at this point, all right? People are laughing out there. Okay, anyway, that's the video. Scattershotted, I know, but a lot of like just loose ends and stuff going on in the in the chapter I wanted to bring up before we get to the next one. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully to get back to. I have some really uh, interesting stream ideas coming up, some tier list content that I want to do uh, about like One Piece backstories. There's another one about Isekai stuff I want to talk about. So uh, once my voice gets back up to 100%, then I'll be doing that uh, that, um, that those streams. So thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Techie 101 signing out. Later, everybody.